Alright, so we're back to Crusader Kings 2 with a new save game, and this time we're going to look at a Horse Lord, because personally, I've done quite well a few times with these, but they're one of the harder ones to play, because the early game is quite difficult, and relies a lot on luck. Plus, just playing another religion would be way too similar to the tribe to feudal gameplay that we already did. So let's look at the horse lords, and we have chosen to play the Yabugrit, which I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce, but they are a Turkish tribe up here on the Aral Sea. And we can raid infidel neighbors for loot, which is nice, as we are Turkish. Um, the nomads are not interested in owning holdings, only more grazing land for their sheep horses. Uh, sheep and horses, not oh, sheep horses would be interesting, no. So we can have nomad holdings, we can have temple holdings, and we can get uh, nomadic government vassals to come to us, which is very similar to how the tribes do it. We do not get any tax from them though. And there's a bunch of other things that will be come more apparent later on. Um, as a nomad, we can also raid infidel neighbors for loot, but this one will stay if we go ahead and change our government type at some point. Um, right. We have four fewer commanders, which is not that great honestly but um, the horse lords are pretty much based on having one really really big army so that's fine um, we can move our capital around which I haven't made much use of that's fine mm. um. oh. Oh. we can ignore religious differences for marriage and such which is pretty nice We can pillage settlements, which I think is a extension of the raiding in those. I surely hope that the music is not louder, but hard to adjust. Let's turn this down a little bit more. It's a little looks kind of all right. There we go. We are also Tengri, which has some religious effects, but we're not going to look into that so let's check what we are we are this area so we have these holdings and i need to disable all the hints because well i have to reinstall everything so the game things i've never played it right okay let's see first we do the base setup that we always do and we have two children, a son and a daughter. And our daughter likes to focus, so let's give her one. And just to stay a little bit within historical context, women within nomadic societies, especially uh, the Mongols, uh, after Genghis Khan that is, actually were the ones holding land while the men were out with a horde uh, serving as generals mainly. So women were quite important in Mongol society. Right, so let's see. We have some minor titles to give away. Let's see who's important and who pays tax. We have this one, Grand Vizier. Mm, what is that? A city. Why is there a city here? Oh, well, that's fine. So who is our, our advisor, is our best friend? Let's make our son our designated regent, though. And here we just go for whatever comes up. Ishad, our highest ranking generals, apparently, but I don't think that they're actually commanders. They're just honorifics, so you can improve relationship with people. So let's... Bump those numbers a little bit. And 
Also, especially our council should be a little bit higher. Pindur is... Traditionally high-ranking official. All right. So who do we have? Uh, let's let's put on our spy master, honestly. Court tutor, diviner, or the steward. Let's have it be the steward. We're not picking by merit. We're picking by position within here. Okay, let's go the through these first. Check our own stats. We are really good at stewardship. So I suppose we should go for business. Gold doesn't mean all that much in nomadic societies, quite honestly. We buy our we buy our retinues with well both gold but mainly prestige. And the difference is that the prestige troops that you buy for prestige also have upkeep in prestige. So they're a little bit cheaper actually to have around it is based on your manpower how much you can have let's check how manpower is increased current population base so the more population we have the higher it goes really there's not much else we can do biden expanding our realm but let's go for the business focus anyhow at least for now, because that's our greatest strength. So let's improve on it a little bit, and we might actually get a little bit of money going. And we will definitely find things to do with our money, because I believe at least this, our capital, which we can move around, does indeed take gold to improve, and there are quite a few things that will help us a lot. So this is not the worst start to have. Let's pick an ambition too. And we would like to create a treasury. Fine, it's the only option we have, so let's do that. Our heir is unmarried. Let's see if there's anyone halfway good in an age range that makes sense. Around here. He's not the greatest at anything either. So we should... We should rather check if we can't do some alliancing around us, because... This is a cutthroat uh, state to be in. And we're pretty much surrounded by stronger lords. You can see the S500, but they have another guy who's going to join them. So this is a thousand, which is not factored in here because these are tribal and you only see the potential vassalage troops uh, if you hover over it. So we'll check who's the strongest Fully in the yard. This guy is pretty damn strong. So let's try and get some sort of alliance with him going. Sadly not. Maybe a betrothal? Also not. Right, then we check the next guy. This would give us a non-aggression pact, but he is not having it. He has political concern. We might bribe into that. But I'm not willing to spend money on that just yet. We're, we're going to find someone, I'm sure. Someone is going to be had. And they don't need to be exactly right next to us because these borders will shift like crazy pretty, pretty fast unless some patch has really changed things up around here. Just need someone. Some alliance. Even if it's not a horse lord. It's better to be with a horse lord. Because we're going to mainly fight other horse lords. Alright, okay. So the next best option is this guy. Down here. Let's see if he's going to want to join us. Why is it better to have horse lords? Because when we fight horse lords... Bringing in feudal, who have mainly infantry troops, <laughs> not going to be much help. Maybe we can go back here. This is fairly important to get done. Uh, 
Maybe Tibet. But it's not looking good. My hope is being squashed. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Could go with a lesser lord too. Anything is better than nothing, honestly. We are going to have much better luck with our daughter. So let's check her first. There we go. No? Still not? Oh man. It's a tough crowd out there. No one? Really? We might have to start the game a little bit to things to adjust because... Right now... Okay, we're going to look at that after we have started the game for a tiny bit. We don't need a duchy. Can go worship the ancestors, which definitely we should do. So we've decided to visit a shrine in the Holy Grove and make a sacrifice in honor of our ancestors, hoping for their aid in return. What will we ask of our forefathers? Well, we need some help with our sword in battle, I'm pretty sure. So now that we didn't find an ally, really, let's check him. Maybe we can find a first target. Uh, we're in a really, really bad spot. I'm telling you, this is not easy. So let's see what we spend money on first. We need something that increases our population or manpower. Either of those is fine. Population growth is good. Morale of armies is not bad. We don't need clan sentiment just yet because we only have our own clan within. So there was something with population growth and tax, so that's what we're going to do first. Metal pen. Best thing we can start out with. Let's check our potential of building up a little bit. And we will spend some prestige here, all of our prestige actually. To build up a little bit. And now we start. Alright. We have asked our ancestors for military power. And we will 100% go ahead and offer our flesh and blood to achieve it. We will be one-eyed. Which is okay. Personal combat goes down. But pagans will like us. And we are surrounded by those, I believe. The Tengri. Now let's see. We have improved ourselves a little bit. Maybe we are viewed more kindly now. No, still not. Ah, come on. Don't take her off my hands, please. Usually at least one who's happy to help out, but there's no one. <laughs> Ooh, this will be hard. This will be quite hard. What have I gotten myself into? So, the only way to really deal with this now is fight those that are already fighting once our troops have built up a little bit. Let's check our Dudes here, we don't want this, we want to train warriors, so our manpower grows quicker. Something we definitely need. Uh, we could go ahead and actually go on improve relationships with someone to improve our chances of having an ally around. I think we should go for this guy. Let's do that. And we don't need this. We should go ahead and 
Actually, this early... What is our income? Yeah, let's go collect some tax. And... We go and get some technology from the Empire Capital down here. Oh, well, that's, that's a kingdom. That's the Empire Capital. Whoops. Wrong one. Doesn't matter. It'll be fine. And what can we do here? Don't need religious relations improved, really. We're not great at converting. Why is that blue, anyhow? Oh, well, let's do that then. Better than not doing anything. Let's see. Kagan, someone of Kyrgyz. Who is that? He's way up there. Okay. Those are... Oh, there's another Khan. Relish up there. And wasn't it this guy that we got? Uh, Rainbow. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. I mean, he's super far away, but at least we, we look a little bit more threatening that way if we can actually get an alliance out of it. Now let's check our daughter. Maybe we can find someone like that too. Oof. Actually, there's quite a few clans there. Um, but they're all lower clans. Ava. Um, how do I jump to you? I just had the button to do that. Ugh. Now you're way too far away. Don't take just anyone. Nepali. The Uzur clan. Oh. This is pretty close. Let's go this route then. Which one was it? Yeah, Kazar. M. This is him. Not going to take matrilineal, but that's fine. Doesn't want an alliance. Let's see if maybe this guy would like an alliance. Nope. Oh man. Let's set them to raiding. Check if we are actually... These guys are actually infidels, so we can go raid them, but they don't have anything to raid. Like they have nothing. Oh man. And yeah, no one hasn't declared war on us yet. But that's kind of neat. Nice. Let's see who's at war. Lots and lots of wars. He's a tributary. Oh, we could try an invasion early on. Cost us prestige, which we don't have, so we can't do it. Could go extort tribute. Probably the best way of building up. He's in many, many wars. So let's these wars play out a little bit. Before we attack him. Nice. 100 military technology points. That's not bad. Our wife is pregnant. Ooh, can we spend it? Oh, yes. We can spend it on military organization, which is one of the better ones early on. That was worthwhile. A 
And this is a huge army, yes. 1500, that's not going to do well for me. Right, pregnancy. Um, yeah, sure. Let's have a hare's head for dinner. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So these are winning pretty hard. They are fighting over what? Over this. Wait, are they winning or losing? Favor of Kagan Kosov, keep check. But he's winning. Let's see if him taking this. Nope, he definitely won. He's at war them. Automatically. All at war. We'll need to find people who are doing not great. <laughs> There's really no great way of doing this. Leon. Ah. Much stronger than we are. So, these, that's a 52% if they take it, so if they take both they should win. If we declare someone who has two, we need to take both capitals, I believe, to win it. Now this guy has a maximum of something around 800 troops. With good generals, which we have none, might do something. Let's see. Oh no, my filters are all gone. No! Okay, let's check. We need men. We need not in prison. We don't care for their marriage status. They cannot be rulers. Should be in diplo range. They want to join our court. And they should be from my religion group. They should be from my culture group. They should be adults. And we save this one to one. That's how we find good people in the world. Want to join us. Let's get some people. We're at least in the double digits here. We create some new commanders. This guy gets kicked out. Two. Set up our army anew. He's a noble tributary. Am I not declaring war on everyone? Can he even? No. I can just take this little piece. Try to. So no, we shouldn't do that against the troop. Who, who, someone who's already a tributary. So how many troops can you have these days? Seven hundred fifty. That's not a lot. And we can declare war on. Are we going to go the? Oh no, we can't invade. What are we going to do? The subordination of this. Which we can't do because we have no prestige whatsoever. We can just go through conquest pieces, increasing our land, or we can extort tribute. Which is probably not the worst thing to do. So we can take on a little bit larger prey. Let's do that. 
We'll try and extort tribute. So we go here. We don't need to take any of these because they're not really worthwhile anything in terms of war score. At least if I remember correctly. Oh, very good. Actually, they're fighting there, so we should jump on them right after this and turn off raiding. They're going to win, but they're going to be bloodied. So we have a chance to take care of this before they recover. Alright. So they will arrive when... Down here in November 70s, but we arrived before that. We might just, might just win this because we have a morale bonus or advantage rather, not a bonus. They do recover, sadly, but they have less people. They are already bloodied. Ooh, another daughter, lovely. It's looking good right now. I'm not going to celebrate anything just yet. Okay. So they're going to go probably over here. And we'll see how this turns out next time.